You got the stuff? Hello, I got the stuff. So this is Dylan John. We met a few months back in Bali and I knew that the next time we hang out, I need to have him on the channel to share all the things he knows about Final Cut Pro because let's admit it, I'm not that good in Final Cut Pro, but he is an absolute wizard. So I'm gonna give 10 minutes for you to share as many tips as you can to the audience. Let's do this thing. You guys ready? Let's do it. This one I taught Teppo recently, very useful. The magnetic timeline is excellent in Final Cut Pro, lets you get things done faster, but this is how you can disconnect it. So on an American keyboard, it is going to be the tilde key, which we should be putting a pop-up now. But if uh, you don't see this key, you can press Option, Command K. This brings up your keyboard shortcut editor. And so what you'll do if you have not created a new keyboard is you will duplicate your default keyboard and then you can name it whatever you want, say custom, type in override connections. You should see it in this drop down menu here and then you can make it any key you want. So on Teppo's keyboard, which this is a Finnish keyboard, I have no idea some of these uh, some of these different icons. I made it the button right next to the one, which is this weird squiggly. So now anytime you press this squiggly, say I wanted to remove this clip from the primary storyline. I press this squiggly and this orange icon pops up and I can move this without affecting its position or all the other clips position in the timeline. So you'll see as I drag that over, now all this stuff underneath didn't move with it and you can move this freely. Another way that this is useful is if you bring up the trim tool by pressing T. Notice how I have he has music in his video at this point as well as like a little sound effect that's attached. You guys may get frustrated because when you press T and maybe do a little slide edit here, it moves everything with it. That's annoying, right? So this time, use that override connections key, whatever you put it on. You could put it on one if it doesn't really matter. Press that and you scroll through. Notice how that does not affect this music and this little sound effect underneath. So this is super useful, super handy. Uh, the magnetic timeline is great, but this is one way that you can disconnect it. And if you wanna have this function going all the time, you just press that key as well as the shift key. And then as you move this around, it's going to stay up the entire time. So then you can move clips, you can trim clips. If I press A, I can just move this out of the timeline and not have it affect everything in there. A very useful tip. I had no clue about this tip of Final Cut Pro, so I feel like I'm learning just as much as you guys are right now. Another useful tip is if you use the same color grade, you use the same effects on your clips every single time you make a video, stop dragging all that stuff onto each clip every time. That's a hassle. Instead, use this feature. So we have Teppo's adjustment layer over top of his footage. You see he has his awesome LUTs that are in the effects browser. Instead of dragging this to your clip or your adjustment layer every time, this whole section, all you do is hit Save Effects Preset. We can name it uh, Teppo's Effects and hit Save. You can save this wherever you want. We'll just save it in custom. And then the next time you go about creating the look of the video or you want to add different effects, you would just go to that custom folder and you see we have this Teppo's effects preset. You can either double click or you can drag it and instantly you have all of those LUTs that are added. Super helpful. This is a very useful way to make sure that your Final Cut is set up for whatever activity you are doing in the software. So if you're color grading, this is going to quickly enable you to color grade quickly. If you're importing media and you want to go through all your stuff, this is going to help you to import real quickly. And that is by using workspaces. So let's say you are create your color grading. Let's hit Command 7. Say you like your vector scope up. You like a very tiny timeline because you don't really need it when you color grade. You like to have a two up layout. So maybe a Luma waveform on bottom and this vector scope on top. And of course, have your color adjustments open. Go to window, go to workspaces, go to save workspace as, and call it color grading workspace. So now anytime you are, let's say you're about ready to color grade and your window looks like this, you just got done with some editing. You don't have to go through and drag all that and set that up. That's Takes a lot of time, go to window, go to workspaces, click color grading workspace, and boom, you have it all set up for you. 
this is very useful for YouTubers. If you want to create a simple jump cut, say you mess up when you're talking, which I have done quite a bit when recording this, instead of going in and using the transform tool to crop in a little bit, to scale in, uh, what you can do is actually go to your transform button. Say you'd normally like to scale in this much, right? So we have our simple jump cut. You would want to line up the eyes because that looks best. Once you have that all set up, you do that same feature that we went over earlier. So you go to your inspector window, go to this video inspector, go to save effects preset, and then we can call this jump cut. Save it to your custom folder, hit enter to save. And so now pretend that this was not zoomed in. Let's, so let's say reset. So you come to the point, you made a mistake, you make your cuts and you want to scale into that one clip. All you're going to do is go to jump cut and double click. Boom, you have an instant jump cut. And to make this even faster, this is what I do. Let me press Command Z to undo. Right click that preset and hit make default video effect. This makes it so quick. So now you have a shot, you have shot one, shot two. You need to scale in. You just press option E, boom, done. All right, this is a very quick one. This uh, inspector window can get so long. Sometimes when you have a bunch of effects, you gotta scroll down. Maybe you make your timeline very small so you can see all of it. It's as simple as just double tapping the top of the inspector and you can see everything in that inspector window. So you may or may not already know that if you press T, you can perform a simple slide edit by moving to the left or the right. As you can see, we have that attached clip. So usually you would go and press that tilde key or whatever key you assigned to that function we did earlier. But there's another feature that you can perform a slip edit here by pressing T, holding option. And now this moves to the left or right on the timeline. That clip doesn't change the duration, it's the same duration. So if you know you like the length of that clip, but you just wanna move its position on the timeline, make sure that trim tool is up, hold option, and you can scroll to the left or right. This one is not necessarily a Final Cut tip, but it's very useful, it's a useful Mac tip that you may not know. If you wanna cut out someone or something in a picture, you don't have to use Canva, you don't have to use Photoshop because there's a feature in Mac that does this for free and instantly. So find the picture, you're gonna right click it, go down to Quick Actions, and hit Remove Background. It'll make basically a PNG image of that. So now if we click on this, we had that picture of Teppo before with the white sky behind, and now we have a cutout Teppo. So you can drag that PNG image into Final Cut and start editing. Here's one for those that like to color grade. So I'm gonna press Command 6, we'll bring up our color curves. And you may or may not know that you don't have to just stick to the red, green, and blue curves here. You can hit this drop down menu and select whatever hue you want. So in this shot of Teppo, let's say we wanna create kind of more of a teal and orange look. Let's bring up orange, we'll bring up a little bit of cyan, and we'll just create a small S curve. So I'll push up on our midtones and highlights. This is adding some orange. We'll go to our shadows and lower midtones and lower this a bit. And then we'll do the opposite here. So lower the teal and the highlights and midtones and raise in the shadows. So now, if we do a before and after, look at that difference. We have color contrast, we have a little bit of pop, and it was done almost instantly. It's a pretty useful color grading tip. I highly suggest the color curves, they're very useful. Dylan John, you have successfully given a whole crap load of tips to the audience. If you haven't yet subscribed to this guy's channel, I'm gonna link it below for you guys to go check out and subscribe. It is the place to go if you wanna learn about Final Cut Pro. Uh, love next, you, brother. Next time, Bali. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>